first things that went through my head were finally, like I did it. And immediately followed by gratitude for my family, for helping and, and being encouraging and, and going through all the hard work they have to go through while I'm gone. My hunting career up to this point has been a lot of logged hours, a lot of preparation, a lot of lessons learned, and a few successes, all working towards a goal of getting a really nice, mature whitetail. The challenge of hunting is what draws me and keeps me coming back, and to be able to, uh, to harvest a mature whitetail is is the upper echelon of whitetail hunting. So to be able to accomplish that goal is something that I've been working towards and to have it pay off is so satisfying. The biggest obstacle in trying to harvest a mature whitetail for me is the opportunities I have as far as locations, the amount of time I have to share between my other obligations and my responsibilities to my family and my job. Most important things I've learned so far hunting whitetails is one, to be prepared, two, to be patient, and to put the time in. When I first decided I wanted to begin hunting, my good friend George had taken me out turkey hunting initially, and we had success, a successful turkey hunt. And I had also started uh, taking up archery at the time. So when I decided I wanted to start whitetail hunting, I was lucky enough to have a great whitetail mentor to start off with named Corey and um, he basically gave me Whitetail 101. We spent an entire season, almost every single day, um, during early archery in a tree, every single morning, lots of afternoons. And I was really lucky to be able to get um, his knowledge and his experience, and his tips, and he didn't hold anything back in it. To have somebody share that type of information that they've worked so hard to attain and share that with you something really special. So I hold that really close. Um, and then moving forward in the years after, I also spent a lot more time whitetail hunting with George, who also is very successful, and um, was more than happy to share his experiences with me. And we have a great time hunting together. I'm able to enjoy hunting a lot more, knowing that I have all of these tips and stuff to, to pull from. To keep my focus, I feel like that's a combination of practice and preparation and to, to be consistent with what's going through my head as these, as these hunts play out. So when I'm practicing in my yard at the targets, I'm not just like shooting at the target, I'm trying to envision what would happen in a scenario, I'm playing out images in my head and how I would react, not necessarily just a robot shooting at the dots on the target. And then when I'm in the tree, if animals are walking by and I know I'm not gonna have a shot or they're not animals that I wanna take, I try to envision what it would be like if it was that monster buck walking in. Two years ago was the first time that I traveled out of state to hunt. It's really neat to see uh, the comparison between how the deer travel from in Pennsylvania as compared to Nebraska, where we were at with Prairie Rock Outfitters. Um, in Pennsylvania, obviously, you can find their travel routes and their trails. But their area is pretty confined, especially if you're near uh, suburban um, locations and things like that. So you can hunt, you can tell where they're bedded, you know where they're going for the food source, as opposed to here where their locations for bedding and food are so spread out that they're almost connecting the dots between these small patches of woods. And it's almost as if they're on a constant move. So you're, I felt like we had to sit all the, like you couldn't not be in the woods or you'd be missing a vital opportunity out here um, because they were just, it seemed like they were on their feet a lot more traveling from far off water sources to the next far off food source to get back to a safe location for bedding. Upon arriving here in Nebraska, we did a little bit of scouting in some areas and one particular area um, was a pretty isolated uh, tree row that went almost a mile long and we had perched ourselves up on a hill and saw three shooter bucks within this kind of square mile area of rolling hills, a cut cornfield, and um, a tree row. 
and the tree row ended right at a pinch point between hills. So you knew that if a deer was going to be walking this route, he was going to be coming through this area. And lo and behold, there were three shooter bucks here. There was one rubbing and rutting right against some cedar branches. There was another buck that had jumped a fence line and was getting aggressive with one in the field and some does. So we knew that this was going to be a hot spot. It was low lying, it was quiet, it was secluded. You could tell that the deer were there all the time. They were completely comfortable. So all the signs just made it easy to decide that that was where we were going to place a stand. So being in this environment and the seclusion and just sitting there just feeling small, surrounded by this vast open space in Nebraska, that hour of hunting was seriously surreal and the most, the biggest ups and downs in hunting I probably ever had and it all squeezed into one hour. Having that first big whitetail come crashing through and in, in my face and not being able to move and, and almost being scared and not having that shot because I was so afraid of blowing it and then him not presenting a shot and, and walking off was like, the high and low all in five minutes. And then then you're trying to, to process that and to think about it and no more than an hour later when you haven't even recovered from the, the first experience, this massive tear comes in again out of out of nowhere, just appears there. And yeah, yeah I had to reset myself and, and try to figure out what is happening here. And he, he's walking and, and you're thinking you're gonna have a shot and then all of a sudden he's pinned me, he's looking me right in the eye and I'm thinking, oh my God, this is gonna happen again. I'm gonna lose this opportunity. And then he just, as, as fate had it, turned his head and walked towards the decoy again. And then I'm able to make this shot and make it happen. And that, and the intensity, the ups and downs, I mean, there's nothing like that. It's, it's, it was like an out of this world experience being in that location with the isolation and the intensity of those encounters. this happened. What a crazy day. Oh, oh thank you. Oh my god when we missed that deer the first we got in the stand at 10 a.m. today late and this other deer came in and he didn't give me a shot and I was so bummed. I thought for sure that was the only the only chance I was getting here. And this guy comes in an hour later out of nowhere like a ghost. 15 yards. He came in, I saw him five yards from this tree. And I shot him at 15 yards. I can't even believe this. This is the biggest deer I've ever shot. This, the freaking thing is humongous. Let's play hide and say do what I want. I go. I can 